You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. But more so, Bill, and you've heard me say this many a time, you have to look at how non-gold bug investors, generalist investors, look at the precious metals. And so they look at what was put in front of them today and say, hey, yeah, the dollar is still going to go down longer term as central banks will keep printing money until kingdom come. But in relative terms, because of what the implication they believe is of this vaccine and getting back to more of a normal economy next year sometime, we all hope, you've, you, you've got to buy energy stocks, you've got to buy financial stocks, you've got to buy all these other things. Well, it's been a tumultuous time in the markets and in the political sphere here in America and, of course, around the world. I've gotten many calls from my Canadian friends, probably four or five last week, wanting my opinion on what's going on. But this isn't a political show, although the U.S. presidential election obviously does impact the way we look at investments, the way we invest. So here to talk about these issues and more is Chris Temple from NationalInvestor.com. Chris has a unique ability to talk impromptu about a variety of subjects from uh, politics to investment whether it's penny stocks, uh, biotech or mining stocks, those type of penny, penny stocks, all the way up to the general equities. What are the currencies doing? Where are good ETFs to invest in for swing trades? Chris covers it all in the, his newsletter, which again, you can find more information at nationalinvestor.com. So Chris, welcome back on to Mining Stock Education. And as you look at the markets today, we're speaking on Monday after the presidential election uh, six days ago, or well, I guess it was election week, <laughs> the, the, the first day of in-person voting. You know, how do you interpret the markets and what are they saying as a result of this tumultual week? Well, if you listen to the conventional chatter bill, uh, most people are saying that they're happy, first of all, that uh, President Trump lost, whether any of the rest of us are or not, doesn't matter. They're happy that the far left of the Democrat Party had a very poor uh, election day. I mean, nobody at all uh, suggested that the Republicans could actually pick up a number of seats in the House. Uh, there was supposed to be this blue wave that was going to chase Donald Trump and all of his followers out of Washington. And instead, uh, it, you ended up in a photo finish by and large, uh, which uh, they're, they're still looking at the different angles of the two horses. Uh, uh, you know, Biden obviously has a lead right now. Some of the media outlets have declared him the president, even though it's not 100% official yet. But you know, by and large, the, the markets seem happy because they did not want in the end uh, to see a blue wave and all of the, quote, socialism that that would have allegedly brought. Uh, they think that, that, it's, that the Republicans will probably keep the Senate, though it's going to be a tall order. I mean, they have the Republicans only have to get one of those two seats uh, in the runoff in Georgia now that we're going to have on the 5th of January. Unless as some rumors uh, suggest that you have a certain senator from West Virginia that changes parties and then the Republicans don't have to get either of those seats in Georgia to keep a 51 to 49 margin. That remains to be seen. I'm not sure that uh, those rumors about Joe Manchin are true or not, though they would make a lot of sense and wouldn't surprise me. I mean, West Virginia went almost 70 percent for Trump. The other senator is a Republican in West Virginia. and Joe Manchin, as often as not, sides with the Republicans, and he's, the, he's one of the farthest of the senators away from the left wing of the party. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, I, I, I think that the markets believe there's going to be some kind of a status quo. Uh, more important, even if you assume, Bill, that let's say the Democrats get both of those seats, even if you have a 50-50 Senate, which, of course, the Democrats would uh, therefore control technically because the president of the Senate would be a Vice President Harris, uh, there's not going to be 50 votes for the kind of stuff that uh, the far left wants. Uh, maybe not a corporate minimum tax, uh, maybe not a big rise in the capital gains tax, will be some tinkering. So I think by and large, the markets uh, are, are relieved that you're not going to have that uh, uh, unfettered agenda of the left. Do you think that uh, President Trump obviously is mounting his legal case in the courts, in the court of public opinion, uh, laying forth the case for voter fraud and how the election was not fair and legitimate? So, as you know, uh, CNN doesn't declare the winner. This is going to go to the courts. This is going to go to the state legislatures. And we could be looking at six plus month, six plus weeks more of this. Yeah. If Trump pulls out a victory and he remains president, is there a certain trade that one could profit from if he pulls out that come from behind victory right now? 
Well, there would be a few of them if, if that were to happen. Uh, my personal opinion is that it will not. Uh, whether or not it should is a different matter. I mean, if the shoe is on the other foot, the Democrat Party would be hysterical right now, wanting recounts. We'd have riots and stuff like that. It's interesting to me, Bill, and I'm being a little facetious, of course, that we haven't seen all the Trump supporters out there looting Kmart and, uh, and Foot Locker and tearing up cities and stuff like that. That's, that's the difference in the two uh, camps, really, when you get right down to it. But look, if, if Trump were to somehow or other pull this out, um, and this is going to be very counterintuitive, I would not be as bullish on the U.S. dollar as I would be right now, uh, as things are, number one. Number two, I think conventional energy, which still has got some clouds over it, would be an even bigger trade. Now, today, with, with the news this morning, energy has already had a big surge along with some other things. But in some areas of energy, it's still uh, very, very cheap compared to what the fundamentals are. And, I, and I, that's an area, uh, you get my newsletter, so you know what I've been saying lately. I think energy generally in a couple of areas within energy specifically, uranium, uh, the green energy uh, movement that's coming, battery metals and so forth, th those were screaming buys as themes no matter who won. And so I, I think that if uh, Trump surprised the consensus and still did pull this out, the trades would lurch back in the direction more of conventional energy uh, and less so the others, but not to the exclusion of the others. What about Biden, Harris, uh, that administra potential administration and fracking? Obviously, that was a big controversy. They're on record saying that they would ban it and get rid of it, but then they knew they couldn't win Pennsylvania if they kept that talking point, so Biden reversed it in the debate. How do you think the oil industry is going to be impacted by a potential Biden presidency? Not a great deal because unlike most Americans, Bill, I realize that most politicians when they're running for office are full of more shit than a Christmas goose. Uh, Biden did not mean a word of most of what he said. He was saying what he had to do to get elected, just like Donald Trump, just like everybody else. If his handlers had told him it was a good idea to go out and identify as a hamster, Biden would have announced that. And so would his vice president, who all she is, is a slightly darker skinned version of Hillary Clinton. She's a woman that all she wants is power. She wants influence. She has utterly no principles of her own, except she wants to be in high office. And she likewise will say and do what is necessary and what she is told. So there will be in a Biden-Harris administration some moves away from fossil fuels that will be decades. And neither one of them will live to see the fruits of that labor. This is the direction that things have to go anyway. They will go that direction under President Trump, and we're already starting to do so. Uh, not that Trump was going to get rid of fracking. Don't misunderstand. But look, we, we, we know we have to do all of these things. We, the, the trajectory of things with climate change and with economics where it concerns are all of these things, Bill, are not sustainable long term. Technology is going to make all of these different uh, forms of new energy better and cheaper. And I'll tell you something, what to me is a darn shame, uh, as somebody who has watched this closely, one of the things that Trump got no credit for at all and it's partly his own fault because he didn't know how to message it properly, in my opinion, was that his energy department, pushing for new modular reactors, pushing for the U.S. to start catching up in the global battery arms race, where we have frankly been sitting on the sidelines, and a whole lot of other things to do with energy, they have set the table for an American resurgence down the road, not just for fracking, not just for conventional energy, but for all of these other things. I mean, once upon a time, the United States of America led the world in nuclear power technology. We totally uh, surrendered that to China, to Russia, to other countries. And steps have already been taken to get that back. As you know, I'm very, very bullish on nuclear energy and uranium longer term. So I wish, among many other things that we can talk about all day and all night, that President Trump had not resorted at times to what I thought were infantile. Uh, claims against Biden, or he's taking stuff, stuff that Biden said out of context. Not that Biden helped himself in this regard either. I mean, what kind of a numbskull trying to get Pennsylvania at the end hitches his wagon to Lady Gaga to come into Pennsylvania the last days of the campaign? Uh, for And she's an anti-fracking advocate. So, you know, I, I think to some extent these guys deserved each other. Um, I, I think that when you look, and I'm writing a lot of purely political stuff these days about this too, Bill, but hey, uh, Donald Trump had the entire establishment against him. In 2016, 
what happened was they didn't take him seriously enough, and he slipped through. He slipped through the Republican primaries. He eked out a win over Hillary Clinton, who was supposed to, by every uh, measure, win and be the first woman president. And the establishment and the news media never got over it, and much more so, and, and, and blatantly so, than the last time around. They had their thumb on the scale, uh, it favoring Biden against them. Here again, some of this is President Trump. You know, I watched uh, Rudy Giuliani yesterday talking with Maria Bartiromo, and Bartiromo says to him, uh, I'm paraphrasing, well, what about the FBI? Why isn't the FBI and the Justice Department all over this? And Giuliani, had, who had been, you know, the whole time, he, he was flat-footed for a minute, didn't know how to answer it. Well, the answer is, it's because Donald Trump didn't really clean out the swamp like he should have. And he still had people in charge of those things, whether it's Barr or whether it's Christopher Ray at the FBI, who are swamp creatures. You know, I saw a really interesting mem recently, Bill, uh, I, and I, I got to find it for this article I'm, I'm working on, on politics and on the attempted, again, political realignment in this country, that, look, Washington, D.C. is not a swamp. It's a federally protected wetland. And unfortunately, Trump did more rearranging of alligators there than he did actually cleaning it out. And it cost them. So, Chris, as a result of where we're at in the election, which appears, again, Biden will be president. I'll, if Trump doesn't pull off, come from behind uh, win here, how does all this affect precious metals? Well, I, I want to I take that a little slightly different direction, Bill. Precious metals are influenced less by whether Trump or Biden is president than by what the Fed is doing. And, and I've said many a time, you know, if you remember a few years ago, uh, Earlier in Trump's presidency, there was that you know public pissing contest, if you will, between Trump and Obama over, gee, it was Obama that set the table for this wonderful economy that Trump was taking credit for. And Trump said, no, it's all me. I'm the greatest, uh, you know, I've got the greatest economy in the history of the solar system, and it's all me, that kind of thing. Neither one of them was Fed chairman, okay? So what happened today, I mean, first of all, look, I am bullish longer term on precious metals for the same reason precious metals have been in bullish trends with some significant interruptions here and there along the way since 1971 when the U.S. dollar went off the gold standard. And, and that, I mean, it's, that's not rocket science. Everything goes up in price when the dollars become more numerous and are therefore cheaper. What happened today, Monday, as we're having this discussion, though, is that you saw gold the last I looked down about $100 from the overnight low. It, was, uh, it, it apparently broken out technically last week, but then this news came out from Pfizer and, and its partner on this vaccine this morning and precious metals got annihilated while everything else went up. And that's what, what that simply means right now, and this will change, is that the market looked at that and said, okay, all of these sectors out there, financial stocks, energy, uh, the two at the top of the list, some of the other types of stocks that were hobbled because people were staying at home. Right, some of the retailers, et cetera, the airlines, the cruise ships. Um, those were all of a sudden, at least for traders, screaming buys. If now there's a light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel between now and when we get back to something close to a normal economy because of this vaccine. And again, I don't believe the science or any of this nonsense behind it. I think we're all being led down a garden path, but that's another story for another time. So what happens when you, you have this news in front of you is that there's less of a need longer term for a lot of stimulus. Number one, that's strike one against the precious metals. Interest rates shot up as a result, uh, also because of that. But more so, Bill, and I've, you've heard me say this many a time, you have to look at how non-gold bug investors, generalist investors, look at the precious metals. And so they look at what was put in front of them today and say, hey, yeah, the dollar is still going to go down longer term as central banks will keep printing money until kingdom come. But in relative terms, because of what the implication they believe is of this vaccine and getting back to more of a normal economy next year sometime, we all hope, you've, you, you've got to buy energy stocks, you've got to buy financial stocks, you've got to buy all these other things. It doesn't matter whether you think that long term the dollar is still going to be debauched or going to the Ashman of history or whatever. That's what the professional money is doing today. Because again, it doesn't matter what the 0.2% of investors who have an automatic bias toward gold think, they're already fully invested. What matters is the other 99.8% of investors. And where they're concerned today, gold knocked, got knocked down several rungs on the ladder uh, in favor of these other areas that are gonna benefit from the economy getting back to normal. So that's today. I mean, it's not gonna stay that way forever, but I've been saying for a while and you know, 
that uh, after I told people at the high in August when gold was over 2000 to get out of our trading positions and ride only with the individual companies that I like, that I thought that we, were, we weren't we were going to see those levels again for a while. And this is yet another reason why. Does it mean I'm bearish? No. Does it mean I'm telling people to sell any of these stocks on my list recently? No. But it means that it's, I'm going to wait a little while before I add a few more that I've got on my shopping list. Chris, your view uh, with Biden potentially taking office, does that mean there is no more trade war with China? And as President Trump has said, is China going to eat our lunch? No, I don't believe that at all. And, and again, you've got to separate electioneering from everything else. Don't forget, Bill, and, and you folks watching, Joe Biden for half a century has been owned lock, stock, barrel by the establishment. He will say what he's told. He will do what he's told. And let, me, let me contrast him, or I guess compare him, with Newt Gingrich. Uh, back in the 90s, I was very involved in some causes in Washington. I was lobbying congressmen and senators over trade bills. And Newt Gingrich was a lying sack of you-know-what on one trade bill we were talking about because Newt Gingrich is energetically or more so than Joe Biden, who was in the Senate, of course, in, at that time, wanted to have China granted most favored nation status. He wanted us in the general agreement on tariffs and trades with China. He tried to pass fast track and multilateral agreement on investment stuff. Why? Because that's what corporate America and the banking establishment said they, they want. So Newt Gingrich did what he was told. Joe Biden did what he was told. Newt Gingrich now has a book out saying, you know what, I was wrong. Now China is the number one clear and present danger in the world. And one of the big ways, and I said this weeks ago, before the election, that, that this idea that Joe Biden is going to turn right around and sell America out anew to China is wrong. It's not going to happen. And I think a lot of people that supported Biden are going to be astounded by some of the policies that come. And I said before the election, I'll tell you again, that the only distinction in a Biden administration on China policy will be that if the far left and the Democrat Party in the end does not take over the Senate. And Biden, look, Biden's got two years for this because guaranteed the House goes Republican after this time in 2022. And the Senate probably, if it goes Democrat briefly, will go right back. That happens in the you know, first midterm of any president, especially now with congressionally, and the media doesn't want to cover it like this, the Republicans still with the momentum. So if you have the Democrats take over the Senate, so they have the Senate and the House both narrowly, the prosecution of the new Cold War with China will focus more on trade and on human rights violations. Trump, just for the sake of getting a deal with China, was willing to look the other way with the Uyghurs in, in Western China and all the other human rights violations and so forth, because Trump was all over the place at times when it came to China. One minute he wanted to be hard, play hardball, next minute he wants a deal. One of the ways that even Trump supporters will be surprised by a Biden administration, now with the deep state and the system more, more full charge and not changing its mind going this direction today and this direction tomorrow, is you will see a more concerted effort to prosecute this trade war with China. That mean Joe Biden believes it? No, Joe, Joe Biden doesn't believe anything. Joe Biden does what he's told by his deep state handlers, the people that have now paved the way for him after a few other times to be president. So if the Republicans keep the Senate, and it looks as though things are going to get pulled that way, then you'll still have these other issues, but it will be more the strategic uh, things with China. It won't take long before you hear a President Joe Biden say, hey, stop what you're doing in the South China Sea. Stop what you're doing with these new artificially created islands. Leave, stay away from Taiwan. Oh, you know what? Maybe Donald Trump was a jerk, but I, we're going to stay Taiwan's alley ally. You're going to hear all of these things. And, and again, you know, look, progressives, even more than traditional conservatives who have been bamboozled by Republican presidents, progressives, you know, time and again, they never learn. They voted for Bill Clinton. He turned out to be a Rockefeller Republican. They voted for, for Barack Obama, who got the Nobel Peace Prize, killed women and children the world over in third world countries with his drone attacks and going along with the deep state. Joe Biden's not going to be any different. Chris, before you go, what would be the best contrarian trade? The best contrary trade? Contrarian added, trade. Contrary trade. Uh, I just added some pipeline exposure back to my recommended list uh, today. I've been almost entirely out of energy for a while. I think some of those plays uh, you can do well with. 
Uh, to me, besides the battery metals and stuff, of course, those are contrary trades. I'm waiting to see uh, what's going to happen as far as any cooperation at all between uh, Mitch McConnell, assuming he stays in charge of the Senate, uh, if the Republicans can at least save one of those Georgia seats, probably Purdue's, and, um, and Nancy Pelosi, or her replacement in the House, if, if there is one. And, and if I was a Democrat Party member, I would want her the hell out of there because she didn't do the party any good this time around. But we'll see what happens with infrastructure because you know, Wall Street rationalizes everything in favor of higher prices because the Fed has given them all of this play money, Bill. <laughs> so one minute, the, the, the Wall Street traders are happy that there's not going to be this runaway stimulus and spending and so forth. Uh, the next minute, they're not. And they get, they get very conflicted about that. There desperately needs to be, for a variety of reasons, uh, infrastructure spending because the country needs it uh, and the system needs it. There needs to be some mechanism whereby all of this money that the Fed has printed goes into productive uses, not just speculators on Wall Street, you know, doing a kind of crazy stuff they're doing today. You see cruise, cruise lines, airlines, movie theaters up 20 and 30 percent today. Uh, on the, I, won't even, I don't even want to get into the whole virus Kool-Aid stuff that people are drinking today. Uh, vaccine rabbit Kool-Aid stuff. As you can tell, Chris follows politics very closely to see how it impacts economics. He shares this with his listeners in his letter, as well as numerous ETF or specific company recommendations. To learn more, you can go to nationalinvestor.com. Chris, really appreciate you coming on today's show. Thank you for your insights. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Mining Stock Education. Please subscribe and share this show with like-minded investors. Connect with us at miningstockeducation.com and sign up for our email list to stay in touch. Much success to you as you learn about, invest in, and profit from mining stocks.